My headlights cast long shadows over the drive as I slowly crept forward. It wasn't fear, primarily, that led to the care I was taking approaching the farm on the slick mud and gravel road that barely passed as such. It was the risk of getting stuck out here despite my four-wheel drive. Sean was nervous, as rapidly rising he was his tell. It was no wonder that so few new vets wanted to work on large animals. Compared to a clinic, the pay was abysmal. The hours were long. You were always on call, and though some liked the outdoors, it came with danger. I took a div out a little too fast, causing Sean to yelp and look over at me with ice in his eyes. Sorry, but can't afford to get stuck, so I'm taking it a little aggressive. Victor should have laid a new bed of gravel this season, but times are hard. Prices for everything are sky high, and it's only getting worse. He nodded and let it go. He was set to take over my territory if he could handle a month or two of calls as my right hand. I doubt he'd last any longer than the last one had, but I had to keep hope alive. I won't be around forever. We parked outside the barn, and I killed the engine. All right, remember what we talked about. He nodded. This isn't like they teach you in school. Sure, you might help birth a calf or handle any of the other textbook stuff, but you will also see other things. It's becoming more and more common these days, but there were always the outliers. This one shouldn't be dangerous, but you can never be too sure. Stay alert, stay alive. I patted his shoulder before stepping out to gather, buy Jim back of tools, protective equipment, and medicines. I checked the chamber of my pistol and tucked it into my appendix holster. Sean stared. You really should get one. We've talked about this before. I'm not really a gun guy. I'm just one to help this community. I shrugged, to each their own. The mud squelched under our boots as we made our way into the dimly lit barn. Hey Vic, where is she? Victor looked exhausted. Sweat, dirt, and dry blood stained his shirt. He stood unsteadily from the stack of hay he was resting on, using the butt of his rifle as a crutch. He shook my hand and guided us further into the labyrinth. Thanks for making it out this late. It started a few hours ago. I thought our baby was breached, so we started getting everything ready when we called you the first time. But it wasn't that. I, I'd only seen this happen once before, 10 years ago when you came out to Tammy's. But that was a goat. This, he trailed off as we approached the pens and cast the light from his lantern into the darkness. She was laying on her side. Blood spattered the fence and walls of her enclosure. There was movement from its abdomen, but the heifer was clearly dead. We don't have much time. I need you to cover us. Keep the rifle trained on the stomach. I opened the gate and started moving in. I was kneeling down next to her, opening my bag when I noticed Sean was still frozen in place near Vic. I snapped my fingers irritably. Get over here. I need an extra pair of hands. He slowly broke from his trance and reluctantly walked over staring at the partially exposed birth canal. A half dozen black spears protruded from there, covered in viscera like some twisted urchin. What? I had my stethoscope on and was trying to determine both what and how far along it was. It wasn't good. Vic, you've got some problems. When did you separate her from the herd? He took a moment before responding. About a day ago, my son noticed she was acting strange, going in circles, not eating, trying to move towards the farmhouse. I shook my head. Should have called me sooner. Okay. Well, we've got to keep a close eyes on the others. Make sure none have picked any more of these up. Shears. Sean handed me a large pair of surgical shears and large knife not unlike a scalpel. And I got to work narrating what I was doing. Okay, so this is a parasite. We need to find a gap in its shell while it's still young. We could try to terminate it now. But if we pick a wrong spot for the injection, it will go primmy. And then we'll have some more problems. My hand was shaking as I explained it to him. It was farther along than I wanted to admit, but I kept my voice steady. I made an incision just past where the diaphragm would normally be and began cutting away the cow's skin, healing back hide, fat, and muscle to get a look, and the less developed side of the thing that had replaced the poor girl's organs. I hadn't realized. I had paused quite as long as I had trying to determine my next move. David, Sean asked, despite the cold a bead of sweat ran down my brow. I adjusted the headlamp to get a better look. It was pulsating. It looked nearly fully formed. I glanced at Vic. Stay alert. We need the sheriff to send someone to. He knew what I meant. I nodded, pulling out an old flip phone and dialing up the main line back in town. Sean tilted his head. No time to explain. Syringe. Red vial. I asked curtly. It moved. Sean fumbled for the syringe. Syringe. Red vial. I repeated. I've got two black vials, a blue vial, no red vial. He replied, 
We need the red vial. Now, I demanded. He started unloading everything from the back. It moved again, and the sharp points began to exit the birth canal and expand. David, you might want to back away. Lick chimed in. Red vial. Sean. I turned to help him search. Rookie mistake. It looked black in the dark, but it was red. I loaded it into the large syringe and placed my hand on the thing. Its entire surface was hard. This wouldn't be easy. Sean, get out of the stall. Thick, ready. Sean shuffled out as I palpated the thing's cold hard shell trying to pick the least developed portion, or a boundary, between two segments. There was no clear spot, so I picked one and hoped I had enough strength to pierce it anyway. Reaching back, I slammed the syringe down as hard as I could. My world went black. I heard a gunshot, cursing, a scream, the crack of shattering wood, flashing lights. I was concussed, a deputy and an EMT were walking me out of the barn to the back of an ambulance. Did I? Lick was there, hands shaking. He nodded. I think you got it. We still gotta track it down, but I'm sure I saw that syringe in its hide as it fled. Sean. Where's Sean? Silence. I tried to climb down from the ambulance. Sean. I shouted. The deputy. An EMT held me in place. He's gone. What? What do you mean? They croaked. He froze. It went right for him on its way out. I don't think it was after him specifically, but he was in the way. I shouted twice, but he's gone. My head was spinning, and I felt like throwing up. Retirement would have to wait.